Uh, hi, hello and welcome. Uh, today I am Andrew George, uh, System Engineer in Trend Micro, and today we will be discussing uh, Trend Micro Cloud One, our new approach for securing your cloud and hybrid and multi cloud environment. If you have any questions, uh, kindly please write it into the QA box that you will find in the bottom left of the screen, I think. And I will surely answer all your questions by the end of this session. So uh, let's begin. Uh, we right now say that people who are using multi-cloud or hybrid cloud environment are in the eye of the perfect storm. In the eye of the perfect storm, which means they are having the challenges of executing set of cloud infrastructure or services because with small services being offered by AWS or Azure or GCP, uh, and the customer really love these services. Also came the question, is this service secured? Can I really use it securely? Or is it will be a door uh, for vulnerabilities or a door for insecurities to happen to my environment? DevOps is increasing the velocity of application delivery. We know if you are aware of the DevOps model, it is really very fast uh, in delivering the products and features and updates to your applications and your customers. And uh, Many of the customers are really wondering if they can truly secure the DevOps without really slowing them down, but actually integrating into their pipeline. Uh, multiple teams into the infrastructure, you might be having multiple cloud environments on Azure and AWS and also on-premises, and you want to really to secure and manage all these services together. You, maybe you might have a compliance uh, requirement if you're a bank, like you want to be attaining to the PCI or healthcare like HIPAA or GDPR, uh, something like this. Uh, all these challenges really face people right now when they are actually going to the cloud. Uh, <coughs> we in Trend Micro believe that transition uh, will not be over and uh, hybrid environment will be the norm. So no, rarely to find someone who is purely cloud or is purely on-prem, but actually a uh, hybrid is a norm where he ever have some of his environment on the cloud and some of it will be on-prem or virtual, whether physical, virtual or physical environments. Uh, the challenges could be really with the cloud native application like the CI CD pipeline, the Kubernetes storage, the EC2s, and how to properly use it in a secure way, especially that in many of these applications, it really depends on codes. So we actually, as a security vendor, should offer security as a code to such products. And, and let's really discuss examples of this. So the first one be DevOps model. So if you're familiar with DevOps model, we'll be familiar with these logos like GitHub for as a code repo or GitLab or whatever. Jenkins is an automation tool, Chef and Puppet. Uh, the, all these people, are, all these software are being used to accelerate the DevOps and deliver things really, really fast. And you want security to integrate with these tools. During the build of the container, not only at the end during their deployment, Cloud workloads, there will always be cloud workloads, whether on, on AWS, on Azure, on Google, on VM, or on your, you know, any local or private cloud. Cloud storage, uh, cloud storage like Amazon S3, Azure Blob, Google Storage, all these services are commonly used in the cloud. And you might need to think, should I really scan every file that uh, is uploaded or created to these cloud storages or not? Uh, other services would be like containers, as we have to speak, which is very related to DevOps. So whether you're using Azure Kubernetes services, Amazon or Google, or you're on a server on-prem, you will need to secure this environment because a lot of really of attacks are currently leveraging vulnerabilities and the methodologies of Kubernetes. And lately, in the serverless, uh, I doubt, uh, I, I know there's uh, very small customers who are now actually going to the serverless and they are asking how can we actually manage the security into the serverless platform. As, as you may know, the serverless platform, you do not have access to the server. You cannot install deep security or any agent into the server itself. 
only have access to the application that you deploy. So this the security for such uh, environment would be a bit challenging as we will explain to you later. On the other hand, your team might as always need to achieve what we call operational excellence, cloud operation excellence, COE, cloud operation excellence. Across multiple cloud and uh, across multiple cloud and achieving as well compliances like uh, BCI, GDBR, HIPAA, and all these stuff. So to solve all these problems and challenges and differences into services and infrastructure, we present to you Cloud One. As you can see, Cloud One was six different products completely made for the cloud. And Trend Micro with this offering is currently becoming the only vendor with such broad security that is completely built for the cloud and built for hybrid environment. Okay, so Cloud One is not in itself a product, but it is a summation of all these products. Uh, you can buy Cloud One only, like I want to buy Cloud One now, but you buy the products one by one by itself uh, and the cloud one is a console that will really unify all these products by itself you will get a single sign-on to all these products as well a single dashboard uh, for central reporting and management of all these products together uh, offering common procurement and buildment uh, build and stuff like this so the first product is Cloud One Workload Security, which is formerly known as uh, Deep Security as a Service. Now it's named on the cloud. When you're using it as a service, we call it from now on Cloud One Workload Security. If you are actually purchasing Deep Security on-prem, it's still Deep Security. But if you purchase it SaaS, we will call it Cloud One Workload Security uh, uh, Protection uh, for instances, whether these instances or this uh, compute engines uh, on GCP uh, or EC or Amazon or Azure. The second product is container security, which is, is uh, very popular for scanning the container images before it is being deployed to the uh, to the production. We scan it for vulnerabilities, as we're gonna explain. We scan it for malwares. We scan it for secrets and tokens that is commonly forgotten by the developers uh, so that we can really solve the issue before being deployed to the production. Uh, application security, it is the security that is completely built for the serverless uh, built for application container in general and specifically for serverless application where you will not have access to the underlying server that these applications are running on. So we offer security here as a code as we will explain that is actually very very easy to implement for serverless application. We also have a file storage security for scanning your cloud storage devices like Amazon S3, Azure Blob, Google Storage, all these stuff. We have cloud conformity. And cloud conformity is another solution that will make sure that you have made the proper configuration for your cloud environment. And this is really very important because uh, Gartner and, uh, and many of the other analysts believe that many of the cloud attacks that will happen, it will not be bef because of uh, an actual security attack, but will be during a misconfiguration for your cloud instances. Uh, many customers who come to the cloud, they are not really cloud experts. They are still adapting to the cloud, adapting to how to use it. And, uh, and the attackers are really leverage, leveraging this uh, less of knowledge to uh, really impose the threat. Uh, That's why, we have cloud conformity to make sure that you follow the best practices for AWS and Azure and making the configuration for your cloud environment. We also have network security, which is powered by Tipping Point, an IPS for the cloud environment. Uh, we will now discuss each uh, product and how it is priced and uh, how it is properly configured. Okay, <laughs> so. Uh, for uh, we we give the builder the we give the the builder or the the customer the flexible to give all what he needs. So we secure hybrid and multi-cloud environment 
and I know that many of the customers could have both Azure and AWS accounts to use the best of both worlds, uh, that is commonly said. Uh, so we secure all of them to one single console with your existing license, either AWS, Azure, Google, VMware on AWS, IBM or VMware, all these cloud providers are supported natively. We support all vintage of application, AWS Lambda, uh, uh, AWS Forgate, uh, uh, Google or Azure Kubernetes services, all of these things are completely supported, as well as support for up to uh, more than 300 operating system of Java, Ubuntu, Suzy, Windows, AIX, and all these. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Deep Security or Cloud One uh, have three main features. First one is uh, it is really built for DevOps because really DevOps are not really interested into GUI, they are interested into more of a code. So we're offering security as it goes through a very rich repository of coding and API that will let you really fly with the products and do it uh, and control it as much as you want. We uh, would not uh, actually only limit you with the GUI that we make, I mean, Yet we will offer the developer the choice to do as they wish with the product and play it as much as they do with a very rich uh, repository of RESTful APIs. Uh, built for automation, so we support all pay-as-you-go models on any of the cloud environment, uh, built for expansion, scaling, all these uh, things, and we also uh, you can also use our products into the quick start templates. So we, we can actually scan these templates and we can also implement the security into your templates uh, that you might want to uh, power on your template uh, on uh, really when the intensity of the work increase or during special events. Uh, <laughs> lastly, we are shooting that the cloud infrastructure is deployed securely and the configuration is made probably and according to the uh, best practices of the cloud vendors as well as uh, the recommendations from uh, or the recommendations from common compliances like uh, PCI or NIST or HIPAA or all this stuff. Okay, <laughs> so uh, for cloud migration, because maybe many people, many customers will be really into this uh, uh, phase, uh, you will have your data center and you will have your hybrid uh, workload into VPCs and the challenges will be managing this hybrid or multi-cloud environment, gaining central visibility, decreasing the, uh, the amount of tasks done on your IT operation team. And uh, you also want, uh, you are not really linked to, to Windows operating system, only you have multiple operating system of Unix and Windows and all this stuff. Uh, gaps could be maybe vulnerabilities into this operating system that you want to really protect from. Uh, ransomware or malware attacks in general, and as well as any CNC communication that might be really involved into your on-prem or your cloud instances. How can you secure from this? Uh, the first two products are completely made for security for all these uh, types of attacks. The first one would be, of course, our uh, known deep security at the service, which is named as Cloud One or Cloud Security. As you can see, it supports all the environments, uh, whether container, cloud, virtual, or data center, and all these orchestrator with a Docker Kubernetes open shaft. We secure most of the known cloud providers, Azure, Google, and AWS. We support also for virtualization, VMware, Hyper-V, Citrix, and all these stuff. We offer a RESTful API for automation of uh, deploying of our security uh, agent onto your Auto scaling environment, uh, and you can this could be used uh, due to Ansible, Chef, and Puppet, and all these stuff. We secure various and various of operating system. I don't remember a customer telling and asking me if there is an operating system is supported or not, and I have told him no, it is not supported. We support old and legacy systems as well as new versions of operating systems. Uh, our deep security, if you don't know about deep security, it offers uh, protection from vulnerabilities through virtual patching hosted IPS, firewall, 
for for PCI uh, requirements and regulation requirements, we offer also integrity monitoring, a FM solution file integrity monitoring that really monitor uh, any uh, the critical files of the operating system and the application. Uh, if anyone really alters this file, I'm telling you who really modified on this file and if it have any security meaning to modify these critical files. And of course, protection from malware and ransomware through our uh, advanced anti-malware engine and machine learning and the behavior analysis and all these modules. Uh, the second product would be uh, Cloud One Network Security. And Cloud One Network Security is simply an IPS that is deployed into your cloud after your gateway. Uh, as you can see here, there are two VMs, uh, like a sandwich, one will be in line and the other will be a standby backup if, if, if fail happens and uh, it really protects you from any vulnerability that is actually targeting your innocences into the cloud. Uh, it depends on the services right now in, in AWS uh, which is Transient Gateway uh, and we leverage this, this, this Transient Gateway to offer a protection for all your availability zones by one single deployment of the IPS. Uh, which is up to 10 gig of inspection. This is really a very great number. So we, 10 gig of inspection for all your availability zones. I would not, you not really need to put IPS on each availability zone. No, but with the usage of the transient gateway, the services from AWS, uh, you can actually secure all your uh, environment with one single deployment. Uh, it deploy quickly and transparently in line without re-architecting. Uh, actually, yeah, uh, as you can you can see in any PUCs or any of the video, if you have really have a try with it, you will see that uh, deploying it will not uh, really affect the bandwidth or the connection at all. Uh, very take less than a fraction of seconds to be deployed and the traffic to be completely uh, filtered. It does a firm virtual patching. What, what really virtual patching means is that we we prevent the attacker from exploiting the vulnerabilities on operating system or applications like SQL and Oracle uh, and SAP and web services and all the and, uh, remote desktops and all these stuff. We prevent the attackers from using these vulnerabilities until you, on your timeline, can update these workloads as much time as you can. We prevent any attacker from exploiting it. And uh, what really uh, makes us really unique into offering this product is that it is powered by Zero Day Initiative. And Zero Day Initiative is uh, the biggest community in discovering vulnerabilities and operating system and application worldwide, as I will explain with the statistics uh, later on. Okay, so we now have discussed uh, securing the infrastructure, securing the uh, your instances and your volume from anti malwares or vulnerabilities. Now we go to securing your native applications, so cloud native application, whether these are Kubernetes and and, and really container related technology or uh, or uh, storage technology, as you can see. So this is a typical pipeline where developers commit a code and then uh, to their code repo, and then they build it and then they push it to the environment. And uh, before building, it is actually these containers that actually is called into container registry, whether this, this registry is uh, on the cloud or on-prem, and then it is being deployed to the to the live production, uh, where it could maybe deploy it into serverless platform, deploy it into containers, platforms and engines, or directly to a workload. You will also, uh, there will also be, of course, a file storage for files to be saved in general, and uh, that could be accessed by uh, your users to upload and save files. Uh, <laughs> The operation challenges will be securing this DevOps line, securing before uh, before actually deploying the container images to the development, and, and uh, not using too many tools. Like I want, we want to optimize it as much as we can, especially use the heavy use of Linux. So if if you can see with me here, this could be vulnerable container images that is, could be scanned in the container registry. So we need to scan the container registry before deploying it to the 
production, uh, there could be vulnerabilities into open source code. So many of the developers, actually pretty much all of them, we, we, they do not really make everything from scratch. They normally use something that is already built and they just modify it and use it to integrate into their uh, on specific application. And when they really use these already made images, it could be vulnerable, it could have uh, vulnerabilities, it could have embedded malwares inside it. So we make sure that <coughs> your build from the start is already secured before deploying to the, to the production. So either scanning the registry or integrating with your automation tool to prevent the build from even happening if it is not really security or securely built. Uh, during the runtime, we might have a third party uh, app vulnerability, SQL injection across your container images, or a malicious file being uploaded to the file storage, and you need to scan. Well, uh, <clears throat> if you're wondering how we can secure these, uh, from how securing these threats, uh, then uh, let me first, before telling you how to secure this environment, uh, for those people who do not really understand the difference between containers and VMs, uh, <coughs> let me make sure that we are all on the same footing. Uh, so this is a normal virtual machine, as you can see, we have here the operating system, we have the hypervisor, and uh, <coughs> above it we have the VMs. The VM is simply the guest operating system and the application being running on it. But in containers, it is completely different. So uh, we have the operating system, we have the Docker or container engine, which is like a hypervisor, like VMware ESXi, and then we have the application directly. We don't have an operating system here like this. All these applications share the operating system, which is really optimizes of the resources, optimizes into the time of deployment to make it very, very light and very, very, really easy to uh, develop, to troubleshoot and to deliver features uh, very fastly to the, to the customers. Uh, <coughs> with this new infrastructure that we have, it really needs its own security uh, that could be built into it, uh, different from the virtual machine. Uh, of course, uh, VMs could be implemented above virtual machines, so you might have virtual machines and above it you have your container images running container. And uh, this is a typical uh, CI-CD pipeline, uh, a common uh, name or uh, that is actually very common with the developers. So these, these are developers, they are committing their code, writing their code into a, a, a code repository like GitLab or GitHub. And then an automation tool will be used like Jenkins, maybe CircleCI, uh, GitLab itself, use an automation tool uh, to build the container image. So we build the container image, uh, this one, this is called the container image. We build the container image from the codes of these developers, right? After building it, we push it to the repository, the repository for saving it. And then after really pushing it, the same automation tool could push the images from the repository to the production, as you can see here. If you're wondering how you can do orchestration for for, for the Docker environment, then like VMware vCenter provide orchestration for clusters of uh, VMware servers. Uh, for Docker, the, the most uh, popular orchestrator is Kubernetes, uh, like this one. So you, the Kubernetes, you will have a master node, which is a vCenter server, and it will really control all your container servers and do orchestration and synchronization and security and high availability and all these stuff for managing multiple uh, Docker servers. I hope uh, that you have with this really short uh, intro, understand what is really the difference between Kubernetes and uh, virtualizations. Okay, now uh, we start telling you how security is. So we have a product that's called Cloud One Container Security. Uh, formerly known as Smart Check. 
And these mod checks can be containers in the registry, as well as it could integrate into the pipeline, integrate with Jenkins so that during uh, building this application, if he found that there is any vulnerabilities or malware, he will not build, uh, the build will not be continued, and it will be returned to the developers to modify it to be built securely again. With this mod check, we really search the container image for vulnerabilities, for malware, for secrets and IOCs, lost token, as well as compliances. If you really uh, if any compliances is really uh, having uh, main tips to be taken uh, into consideration. Uh, we can, of course, we can have a schedule scan that is, could be run on your registry so that any new malware discovered will be really protected. You will be really protected from. And of course, this product is completely have a GUI and have a great restful API that com and uh, could completely be managed uh, through coding as well as uh, a geographic user interface for people who uh, still prefer a GUI. Uh, the second one with will be application security and the application security is completely made for uh, the serverless uh, services like uh, AWS, Lambda, Azure Function, Kubernetes services and all these stuff. Uh, we made uh, the application protection for it. And simply uh, during building the code, you will have just to insert two lines of code two lines of code for turn micro into your images. And what the, these lines of code will do is that it will redirect the traffic before it goes into your application uh, to turn micro to prevent any SQL injection, remote code execution, or any malicious file payload. So if your application is actually getting files from, from customers from, uh, from customers or have any interactions of input, uh, and you are wondering how to control it uh, with the application control, the traffic will be directed to Trend Micro. And it really have the less than minimal impact on performance. <coughs> and when the, this traffic uh, is uh, implemented uh, or is directed to Trend Micro, it will be completely filtered from any SQL injection or malicious payloads as well. Uh, we support the various of the languages like Python, Java, because this is we you will use codes from Trend Micro, so it might be the same language that you use. So right now we support Java, Python, Node.js, PHP, Ruby, all this stuff. Okay. Last services that we're gonna talk about is the storage services. So whatever storage you are actually you have bought from any vendor, uh, you can simply launch a Trend Micro script so that on, on any file upload or any file creation, it will be scanned for uh, malware. Uh, if there is any malware or uh, malware or variant uh, reputation with signature base and as well as machine learning, uh, so that we can know if this file is malicious or not. If it is malicious, it will be quarantined. If it is not, it will stay into the storage. A very, very easy product to set up and install, and uh, as well as uh, I see as a needed one for your uh, cloud expansion. Uh, now comes our latest, uh, so we, we right now, if you can remember, we have now discussed uh, five products. Uh, the IPS, the cloud one workload security, the application security, uh, and the container security as well as the storage security. And the last one would be uh, a product for achieving cloud excellence, for making sure that you are driving your uh, cloud ship into the right way and uh, the best maneuver possible for your environment. So <coughs> achieving cloud excellence is really difficult with the Robert Gross into the new cloud services and uh, with many teams actually involved into this and uh, involved into your uh, cloud infrastructure and using different services, it is really difficult. And you might find really a lack of visibility. Like uh, across account, across repository, and this is something absolutely not recommended, open storage through the internet. You should really Ask yourself and check uh, who have the read the right ability to your storage. 
it shouldn't be open like this. Uh, uh, keys of encryption keys not be synced properly, misconfiguration into cloud templates. And this commonly happened because during what we call a cloud booming. So your first day in the cloud, you will really enjoy the cloud. You see how much it, its services is much cheaper than on-prem, as well as much faster and highly available. So you like the cloud services. And you start really expanding and using it a lot and lot, and you forget about uh, configuring your application in a security way. And here comes the gap of this really cloud booming or sudden cloud expansion. And uh, with cloud conformity, you will be able to have visibility on all your services, as well as making sure that you have probably made the configuration for it. So it simply do two things, uh, auto check. So continuously check for adherence of your environment to best practices according to AWS best practices and Azure best practices. Best practices for performance, for configuration, for security, for authentication. Best practices as well for cost optimization. So we can help you really optimize your cost into the cloud more and more. Uh, <coughs> after checking, we can also use our software to auto correct the uh, bad configuration or the wrong configuration that can be done. This is a very, what we call a non-intrusive check. So you can run the check very, very easily. Uh, it will show you all the gaps or, or the configuration gaps into your environment and you can simply correct it. I really encourage anyone who have a cloud uh, environment to try uh, it for free. We have a 15 days trial. You can try yourself and discover how much visibility it really gives you. It supports uh, 70, more than 70 services on AWS and Azure, and we have a knowledge base for more than 600 best practices rule. Uh, we can also check uh, your configuration against compliances like PCI, HIPAA, uh, GDBR, and all stuff like this. Uh, with this, I have explained uh, all the services of, of, of Cloud One. Uh, again, what makes this a leader is our vulnerability research, is our intelligence, is the back end that is actually feeding Trend Micro's intel intelligence, uh, probably. Uh, this is through uh, a community called the Zero Day Initiative. Zero Day Initiative. Uh, since 10 years have been a leader into discovering vulnerabilities. And in 2018, we have discovered more than 50% of the vulnerabilities discovered this year. And this is really awesome. We are really, as you can see, the most or the most vendor is covering such a vulnerability and uh, protecting the customer ahead of vendor patch. We protect you before even the vendor release his patch for all the vulnerabilities that we discover. We really invest a lot into the intelligence, which give us really an edge into protecting the customer from vulnerability attacks that could uh, could happen to any uh, of his environment. We have research centers across the whole world, uh, more than 40, uh, 14 research centers of four and 450 researchers around the world to actually secure all your services and uh, whether vulnerabilities, anti-malware, machine learning, IoT and OT stuff, all these stuff. Uh, whether you, uh, these features, whether you're available, whether you buy Cloud One, which is built for the cloud or if you are still using an on-prem form, uh, on-premises environment, you can also use deep security software for workload security, as well as deep security a smart check for securing your file storage security as well as your container. So you can use leverage these on the cloud. If you are still on-prem, you can also use deep security and smart check for using for container and file storage security. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I'm really proud of is that our uh, ratings, how our security is proven uh, among the world analysts. So as you can see here, uh, we are named a leader into cloud 
workload for security for Q4 2019 by Forrester Wave. Uh, we are above any other vendor in offering all these uh, breed, uh, best of breed technologies to secure all types of services and deployments into the cloud. So you can really live happily and worry free from any security things. Uh, this is a pricing model. As I, as I have said before, there's nothing called like I want to buy Cloud One. You buy uh, services from it, and the Cloud One is a console that will unify all these services together. The more you buy, the more you will have visibility to your network. Workload security is per VM. Container image security is per registry, per container registry that is, will be scanned. We do not really uh, count on the number of scans. You can do infinite number of scans, but we only care about the registries that we will scan. Application security is simply per application. Uh, file storage security will be per storage bucket. Per storage bucket scan, you will have to buy licenses for file storage security. Confirmity per cloud account. So if you have AWS and Azure, you'll buy two cloud confirmity licenses. And of course, the network security will be by throughput, normally by throughput. Available subscription pricing model as well as consumption pricing model if you prefer pay-as-you-go model. We also have a consumption-based pricing. Uh, Micro Cloud One, flexible, automated, and all in one console to deliver you the best security ever into the cloud. Uh, Gartner, Gartner do not have a magic quadrant for cloud workload security, but have recommendations. So it is telling you, Mr. Customer, if you want to buy cloud security, you should really care about one, two, three, and four of these stuff. And uh, we actually fulfill eight of eight of the core controls and 21 of 25 of the additional criteria. And this is the highest score ever among all the vendors in protecting the cloud. And lastly is our IDC market share. So according to IDC, we have actually 35% uh, of the market share for cloud one for uh, for the cloud security by deep security as a service which is known as yes cloud one workload security so cloud one workload security is actually used by more than 35 percent of the customers worldwide this show you how much really the customers enjoy and trust run micro especially deep security and securing their cloud environment and how it is really very easy uh, just set up and protect you with full range of modules from various attacks. Uh, by this, I have finished my presentation and uh, shortly I will answer all your questions that you have written. I hope you have enjoyed the uh, webinar and uh, see you uh, after the break uh, for five minutes. Thank you a lot.